more of that a bit later on in the call. So that's work in progress. I want to talk a bit about issues now. And I'm sorry for a bit choppy and changey tonight. We was interrupted earlier and I've just been coughing a bit, so I'm sorry for that. But let's talk about issues, some of the um, outstanding issues that a number of you have. Let's start with the first one, which is the non-honouring of Eucadia One Heaven Instruments. Now, I think a number of you, even most of you, that have perfected an EDP, an Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, and sent it off, have experienced some degree of dishonour. And I know that one of the arguments that people like to throw out there is that the way to measure success of Eucadia or One Heaven is purely on the basis of the existing Roman system honouring the ecclesiastical deeds. Well, let me be absolutely clear. The success of Eucadia has nothing to do with the Roman system validating, accepting. Their acceptance is completely irrelevant. What we are doing is we are perfecting their dishonour. So if they are dishonouring these instruments, it in no way invalidates your claim of right, but it goes to the heart of what the Day of Judgment is in a notorial procedure of four years, with this December the 21st being the Day of Divine Judgment. It goes to the heart of perfecting what that is about. Now again, I know when we talk about things like day of judgment, people go, well, what's he talking about? You know, why do we keep going back to these kind of biblical terms? Well, we're not. We're talking about a notorial procedure. We have based a series of documents on the foundations of their law and our law. It is a foundation of the Roman cult, the Vatican, the Catholic Church, the entire global financial system, the Bar Association, and every single government in the world that the treasury of one heaven, the treasury of heaven exists. And that treasury is full of credits. That is written into canon law of the Roman cult. And it is fundamental to the operation of the accounting of indulgences and therefore negotiable instruments of all manner in the world. If those systems, if those concepts are repudiated at the highest level, the entire existing system would cease to exist. That's how fundamental they are. The concept of a deed poll goes back to the ancient principle of what is a deed. And the concept of blood goes right back to the beginning of the Mithraic belief system it goes back to Leviticus it goes back to the main root of their tree that a blood atonement and that blood is the most valuable currency in a system that demands even today blood sacrifice so if an ignorant judge lawyer prosecutor or some other official through their absolute stupidity, does not know their system. It has no bearing whatsoever on us, but has total bearing on them. Please, I ask, do not interpret. Please do not interpret their dishonour as a failure, but the fundamental meeting of one of the requirements that we have said all along, you cannot render a valid default judgment against an entire system that has been in place as a slave system for thousands of years claiming to be lawful overnight. You must have overwhelming evidence that they do not believe 
in their foundations that they are so stupid and incompetent that they have no honour whatsoever and that the system is in complete heresy to itself. And that is exactly what each and every one of you have been doing and helping on behalf of your community, on behalf of the divine, on behalf of our children, on behalf of our future. It is far from a failure. It is an absolute success. Now, why then have we changed? We've changed in part of the ecclesiastical deed to focus now more to the national officials because we've made it clear that there is absolutely no remedy at a local or state level in their system. None. Nothing that you have done has been imperfect. The replies from the registrars are absolute trickery and lies. Of course, they record events. But the events they record are in Roman time and because those events in Roman time, what they're doing is they are recording an event of property and capturing property. They're just playing with words. They're just lying to you when they write back and tell you that you've made some mistake and they deny. Or they're very careful with their words. So the non-honour of Eucadian instruments is far from the failure. It is exactly what we expected. And the only reason we are revising is that we have made it patently clear, overwhelmingly clear, that there is no remedy at a state or a local level. None. Even though they register us at birth at that level, there is no remedy at that level. We are now moving to a state focus. And by the end of the year, before the end of the year, we will be focusing on an international focus. And by that stage, the overwhelming evidence of their dishonour will be absolutely unmistakable. Now, another area of issues I know for people is the continuing court cases that you keep presenting to courts and the courts keep lying denying, um, hindering. I, I, I know that this is not stopping and I know that this is a terrible frustration. All I can say to you is that in a system, in the bar system, that acknowledges, openly acknowledges, and we have evidence of this by the most senior of bar officials, that they acknowledge that they are willing to accept irrational argument as law between bar attorneys and that reason is not a condition of law, when you're dealing with that kind of madness, please don't expect them to change overnight. And they're not. Some are, some aren't. What is changing is your competence in reading, in the knowledge we're presenting, and your, your recognition that the more you read, the more you learn, the more you study, the more you practice, if and when you are confronted with attending court, you are the magic bullet. Not pieces of paper, you are the magic bullet. Now, another question, another issue that people have is this question of, well, this is great to hear about the handover. <clears throat> this is only new this week, but... I hear Frank is leaving at the end of the year. That's great. But what about these people that he's involved with that are working on different documents? Is there some kind of elite that uh, we're not hearing about? Frank said that there's no group there that is involved. There's no... The Jesuits aren't involved. The, the Vatican's not involved. There's no private um, corporation or benevolent patrons or anything sitting behind the scene. But we want to know, is there some kind of elite group? Well, the answer is there's not. There's people I've uh, connected with over time, and there used to be. There actually used to be an elite group. And that elite group was dissolved at the beginning of the year. And it caused quite a degree of controversy at the time. 
And the reason that group was dissolved at the, end of the, at the beginning of the year is that if we hadn't have done that, then as we move forward, that elite group would have eventually become merely a replacement of me. So instead of uh, you dealing with some guru or whatever people want to claim, which I'm not, I'm just a man, you would end up having a replacement of not one but some committee. And as I've said over and over again, the success of Eucadia rests in the competency of local communities, building up from the grassroots, coming together, electing their state representation, then the states coming together to elect their national representation, and then the nations coming together to elect their union representation from the bottom up. The success of Eucadia rests in that model, not in elite. But as we're doing this, as I've asked a number of you tonight to say, please, if you have knowledge in an area where codes need to be developed, at least to a point that people can discuss them, then that's not selecting elite. That's merely people helping in this transition period as the communities come into play. That's why there is no formal group. There is no formal meeting because there are no formal elite. So I hope that answers the question and concern that anyone might have to that. Well, with the half an hour or so, and it might be a little bit over, we have left. I'm just going to have a quick drink, and then I would like to talk about some of the key concepts that can have an immediate help to us now if we think about these and how they can impact our perception. And we, we have described already in this call tonight a number of them. One we described is there will be people that want to put on you the presumption that unless an EDP or any kind of document from Eucadia is embraced and, and, and accepted by the Roman system, if that doesn't happen, then Eucadia can't be measured as success. Utter rubbish. Utter rubbish. As we have just shown, the perception and the honest perception from day one is that we do what we do. The only reason we contact these people at all is to perfect their dishonour. Otherwise, I wouldn't ask anyone to waste your time. That's why, for example, we've turned off the promotion of the EIN. Why? Because we've seen people who've actually got EINs have them taken away from the by the IRS for, for no legitimate reason. We've found people have got them and other people haven't. Why would we encourage any of you to waste your time with a Roman entity that doesn't even know what it wants to do? Well, let's talk about some of these key concepts. Key concepts that can have an immediate and important impact if we keep them in mind. Well, when we talk about fear as their greatest weapon, fear isn't actually their greatest weapon. What their greatest weapon is and has been for a long, long time is misinformation and misdirection. Sometimes very subtle, sometimes blatant. So let's have a look at some of these. One is, you are mortal, and I'll go through this in detail, but I'll just read this off first so you can get a flavour of, of what we're talking about. You are mortal, they say, versus the fact that you are immortal. You are nothing. You are everything. We, we are able to prove through your caveat. You only live once, they say. Very important to maintain fear. Versus you may have lived many lives, and reincarnation. You need to learn, they say, and so they restrict education versus you just need to remember what you already know and the proof of what actually is in junk DNA. Nothing will ever change, they say, 
versus the only constant is change. Look at Egypt. Look at Tunisia. And even though Libya is... is